Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Sebastian here with Spin Driving School. Today we are going to take a look at speed limits, uh, your recommended and advisory um, speed limits, and as well as your regulatory speed limits. Uh, so the main difference in between those two is going to be the color uh, in which the signs are placed or on. Uh, so black on white is going to be a regulatory sign and black on yellow generally is going to be advisory or recommended or suggested however you want to word it uh, so in those cases you do not have to technically go with the suggested speed limit however it's always going to be based on the weather conditions on the environment on the situation and circumstances you find yourself in on how well you can control and drive the car in those conditions etc etc if you're doing your road test in certain situations it is definitely better or recommended to use the advisory or recommended speed um, and then in cer certain situations you don't have to follow it you you shouldn't really be failing the road test for not going those speed limits because they are not um let's say you know mandatory but again it's all going to be based on the situation and circumstances. So, you know, when you get off the highway, for an instance, in most cases, people slam on their brakes as soon as they exit or even before. So technically, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to exit first and then, you know, slow down. But some ramps are pretty short. Some ramps have intersections coming up, you know, like 100, 200 meters right after getting off the highway. There are a few ramps and of you know a lower mainland where you do have speed limits actually posted um very closely after getting off um, or merging off the highway so again it always depends as i always tell my students you know driving is always situational and circumstantial so you have to be able to adapt to the situation that you find yourself in and you know use those skills and the knowledge and um you know every, everything that you have in your arsenal in, the, in those situations so anyways we'll just get right into well first we'll go through a couple of the signs and then we'll get into the video so let's let's just get right to it okay so we have this first group of signs so those would be your regulatory signs so the ones and speed limits uh, black and white obviously uh, there's your yellow recommendation you know 35 going around the curve same thing here 45 going around the curve obviously these are in miles so they're probably from the states um, exit at 50 so again that's for the highway the one on the left would be a violation the one on the right normally not a violation so here we go uh, there's your 50 so if you're ever going to assume anything on your road test or in real life is your speed limit so your speed limits are generally going to be 50 in most situations unless posted otherwise there's again your 50 kilometer speed limit right before merging onto the highway now there is a crosswalk up ahead so that's one of the reasons probably that 50 kilometers is enforced in this situation once you get to this point you can start accelerating and there's as, as long as there's no cars in front of you obviously and you should be matching the speed on the highway so we're on the highway we're actually going to be getting off at hastings um here so you will see as we get closer to the ramp there'll be that suggested or recommended speed limit to exit off the highway which you know you if you want use it so there's 60 however you know in about 150 meters coming up on the right hand side there will be a uh, mandatory or a regulatory sign of 50 kilometers per hour there it is on your right hand side and it's kind of behind the bushes so i know people who have failed actually in this position there's a google image um, now there's also on your left hand side there's a there's like a some sort of a building i, I think this is a uh, I actually have a, an over um, or a bird's eye view picture of that from again from Google Maps. So I think that is some sort of a technical facility to get into the Cassiar Tunnel, uh, whatever you call those places. There's your 40 kilometer speed limit posted in the residential area. So if the speed limit is not posted, it's going to be 50. Um, if it is posted, then follow the speed limit, especially in these residential areas. You shouldn't really be driving more than 30 to 40 anyways. And there's your park zone right after the 40 so now you go from 40 to 30 and then once you exit out of that 
park zone, you are basically still in the 40 zone unless otherwise specified. So there's a 40. Uh, we will see the end of 40 sign coming up here after this four way stop sign. There it is on the upper right hand side. So now again, the speed limit goes back to 50 unless otherwise specified. Generally, if you are in the area where there are yellow lines, whether it's single or double, again, unless otherwise specified, that's where the speed limit is going to be 50. And if there are no lines, which generally would be residential areas, unless otherwise specified, 30 to 40 is going to be ample, obviously, depending if there's traffic circles, you know, things like that. Smaller, tighter streets should definitely be operated at lower speeds. So there you go. We have a yellow line. So here the speed limit is going to be 50. Generally, if you want to go around 45 on your road test, okay, sure, that's fine. And then if you if you go from any of these main streets onto the side streets, which which again, generally, that's the way it works. The speed limit is going to be usually from 30 to 40. Now, legally, you can actually drive 50 in residential streets unless otherwise specified. It's just not recommended and it's not safe and it's it's irresponsible. So you shouldn't. But. Uh, so again, yellow line speed limit here would be 50. We're making this left turn onto a residential street. There's no lines. So in this case, I'm going to be moving within 30 to 40 K. In most of these residential streets, you have stop signs again, two ways, four ways, uh, traffic circles, uh, you know, roundabouts, uh, crosswalks, etc., etc. pedestrians, you know, there's just obviously a lot more things going on um, in these residential areas. I shouldn't say a lot more, but obviously it depends. You have cars parked on both sides, so it's it can be a challenge. So you shouldn't really be driving too fast in those. So again, 30 to 40 in residentials, uh, you know, around 50 on main roads, unless otherwise specified. In Burnaby, the speed limit is 50. Um, unless you're on low heat or on the highway, the speed limits can vary from time to time in other cities it's different so again every city every environment is going to be a lot different so you need to know the city you're in and you know the more practice and experience you have the better uh, you are going to be at, at driving and, and and dealing with these uh, circumstances it's just it's just the way it is you know there are no shortcuts so again in this in this sort of neighborhood 30 to 40 unless obviously you're going through a school or a park zone again we're turning from a main street or from a main road onto a residential area and again 30 to 40 in these streets no line in the middle um, however if you do end up turning into a road that has a sp specified speed limit from this point on then you do need to follow whatever that speed limit is Sometimes it can go up in some cases, but usually it'll, it'll drop to, you know, either to like a school zone speed limit or there are a lot of 30 and 40 residential speed limits throughout Burnaby and Vancouver and the lower mainland. So always keep an eye on that. Some of these uh, speed limits can be hidden behind trees, behind hedges, houses, trucks. You know, people park too close to intersections. So sometimes they are hard to stop, uh, spot rather, just like stop signs. Uh, that's another good example. But, you know, you just have to be observant and, and try to look uh, for these changes in these speed limits as much as possible. This is why it definitely helps, especially when you do doing your road test to drive in the environment that you're familiar with. And, you know, you know where the signs are and what the speeds are and, you know, schools and park zones, as long as you're observant, as long as you can spot these things. Right. It's not necessary, but all I'm saying, it, it definitely helps. And here we're about to make a right turn. So again, we're still on the residential street, but we are actually turning onto or into a school zone. So now we should definitely make sure that we stay around that 30 mark, right? Between like, let's say 27 and 33 ish. But I always tell my students, you know, stay as close to the speed limit as you can, because some examiners are pickier with these things and than others. So we're just going to cruise at 30. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll get into a couple more videos. So here we are on low heat. So in this section, the speed limit is 50. And we're just going to fast forward. And basically at the next intersection, um, this is where the speed limit changes to 70. And then it continues at 70 through, you know, most of low heat. There are sections where it goes, you know, down to 60 and even up to 80. But um, again, that's just the way it is. 
here going around this curve and a lot of people i see people slow down on this curve all the time uh, again the sign on the right hand side is your suggested speed limit so you if you have to go 30 or if you have no other option sure again depending on the weather conditions there's that intersection on the right hand side and there's another one kind of a weird intersection on the right hand side it's not really a sharp curve but um you know that's those are probably the few reasons why it is a suggested speed limit of 30 there which i think it's a little bit too slow but you know i usually go through there like 45 or even 50. uh there you go there's a suggested speed limit through a roundabout which usually most roundabouts especially these bigger ones 30 is going to be fine um, no problem if you want to go a little bit slower in those residential areas 15 to 20 even in some cases sure if you're taking a sharp turn if you have a bigger car if you're not confident and comfortable take it take your roundabouts and and these sharp curves you know a little bit slower that's fine and uh one more time exiting off the highway so first you exit you know you're 80 or 90 as long as obviously there's no cars in front of you there's your 50 which is still a suggestive speed limit however this ramp is still pretty short um, so you know again depending on the road conditions how fast you're moving what's going on in front of you you do want to start slowing down sooner than later you know you don't want to give the examiner a heart attack and you still want to keep it safe uh, there's again the speed limit posted and there's the intersection coming up so this ramp again is pretty short and there are some that are even shorter like north van has some terrible uh, exit points off the highway um, there's a yield sign that we're making the right turn and you'll see on the right hand side is where the speed limit is posted i'll have a google image as well uh, so here we go 50 in burnaby that is your maximum speed limit in the city of burnaby and then 20 in the lanes that's what that sign said it's, it's actually a pretty old sign so now you know that the speed limit is always going to be 50 unless otherwise specified so if you're going to assume one thing assume that that if you're in the city and you don't know what the speed limit is unless you miss the sign that's the only thing you're going to assume that is going to be a 50 kilometers per hour so i hope that helps keep checking out my videos in the future and stay safe.